trapped in the aurora. It's a 21 tall, 10 foot wide depiction of the aurora made from 35,000 5 millimeter LEDs. It's made by Feely the computer with a whole bunch of short videos of the actual aurora. And then it, through machine learning, it creates a composite of what it thinks that might be an accurate depiction. The aurora was and is something I have been fascinated with for years. It's created by solar winds projecting atoms of oxygen nitrogen predominantly toward Earth. And as the solar wind goes by the Earth, it just bypasses it because of our magnetosphere. But in places where it's a little bit weaker, it occasionally gets sucked into the atmosphere and they glow. Well, there's always a chance when you make something you've never made before. You have the wonderful opportunity for a learning curve. But I have to give Ed the, all the credit he, the brilliant one who made it all work. I just had the fabulous task of thinking, well, what if, what if we did this? What about that? <laughs> So my part in making this is, um, I spent the last couple of years building it in my garage, <laughs> which was actually a pretty big project. It was kind of my weekend, uh, usually my Saturday project. It's based on some of the technology that I created to do the LED chandelier, but it's much, much bigger. It's like everything's scaled up. There's one little Arduino microcomputer in my chandelier. There's 12 driving this, you know. Um, there's over 30,000 individually addressable LEDs that update 20 times a second in this thing. So it's, um, there's a lot happening technologically. There's, there's a very powerful laptop that's running the neural networks to generate the, the frames of images that are, that are playing on the, the screen. And then that data goes up to the Arduinos and they all break it into their little piece and send it down the strips to all those 30,000 plus LEDs. There were definitely technical roadblocks along the way as I was trying to figure out how to do it. There's 300 rods, each one has a bunch of drill points that have to be done very precisely. And there's like 3D printed jigs to get those in the right place. And then there's all the electronics and programming. So there's a lot to it. Neural networks are really starting to grow in use in the art world. I wondered if we could take uh, something called a generative adversarial neural network and use that to create the images that we use on the, the light. I'm a programmer and when I write code to do stuff, it looks very digital also. And I, I didn't think I could draw something that looked natural. And so that's why I was thinking, what, what if we use this neural network technology? So I just looked around on the internet and found this, this uh, software that's out there that basically you can train this thing called the Generative Adversarial Network to um, basically feed it video and then it will spit back more video that looks like the video that you trained it on. Um, and so the example uh, that I found, it was actually like a little fire, feeding it some fire. And then, and then they play it back and it would do more fire that looked like the fire, but continued forever and it's always different. And so I'm like, wow, if that would work for the Aurora, that would solve a lot of my problems. I like to make things. I've, I've, I've been a maker my whole life, whether it was like in my dad's workshop, soldering stuff together or making stuff with code. Lately, I've been doing kind of a combination of hardware and software. And so it's just, I think it's the kind of the same kind of creative process that artists have where they build something out of nothing. And it's just that joy of, of bringing something to life. I used video to train the neural networks. There's actually like 50 different neural networks and it, it rotates through them. And each one does a different, different kind of combination of colors and motion and things like that. But it looked 
really abstract. It just because it was just like colors moving, it, it, it wasn't clear what you were looking at. And so I thought if I um, put some trees in the foreground, it would ground it and you as the viewer have a kind of perspective. I'm okay, I'm looking up at the sky. And so I just grabbed some clip art trees off the, <laughs> off the internet and stuck them there. And you know what? They looked like clip art trees. Um, and uh, not, not too surprising. I was like, well, okay, that's not going to work. And so then I just went out in my yard and uh, it was a good time of the year because it was overcast. The trees were really black. And so anyway, I went and these, took pictures of the trees and put them there and it just instantly worked. It was like, okay, that, that was what I wanted. It, and it has a whole bunch of trees and it ra randomly rotates through the trees too. So it's combining you know, random selections of neural networks with random trees. And it, so it's never the same twice. Um, but they're all, they're all from my yard uh, somewhere. But it just kind of got me thinking, well, why, why did these trees look real? And, and like the clip art trees look fake. And that's really what neural networks do. Neural networks get trained on a bunch of data. You can train it on a bunch of pictures of cats and it'll say, yes, this is a cat or no, it's not a cat. And so neural networks really mimic some parts of the way our brains work. We spend our whole life seeing trees. We get really good at that's a tree, that's not a tree. I think when you have this art that's using neural networks to generate things, it's sort of speaking more directly to our brains in a way, because it's sort of speaking in the language that, that, we, that we use, if that makes sense. And so, so that's when I really felt like this was working. It would just every once in a while just take my breath away. With the, you know, the combination of the, the aurora and the trees. And I think it has that fundamental impact because it's sort of closer to who we really are. I show, show it to Jenny along the way and she's super supportive. She's like, oh, I love this, I love this. But there's always like one thing. That's what I noticed in Jenny. But I don't like this one thing, you know? And she's very clear, like this one thing you gotta change. I'm like, okay, I, got, I can change that. We went through several rounds of that. And then there stopped being that one thing she didn't like. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm good. I proposed, well, what if I went in to do this? She's like, no, 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 don't go there. What you're doing is good. Keep going this way, that kind of thing. So it's, she's very supportive, but also provided really the direction I needed to get to where we are now. I want to pay attention to how fragile and how exquisite